Hi Trig students and welcome back. So today's lecture is going to be about the unit circle, which probably is the most important lecture in all of trigonometry. It'll be helpful for you to come back and revisit this from time to time. So our previous definition of the six trig functions was using a right triangle and looking at the acute angles in that right triangle. And so obviously that conception of the trig functions will only work for acute angles. So the following development of sine and cosine is much more complete and addresses angles of any measure, positive, negative, any real number at all. So we begin by considering a unit circle. And as you see in front of you, a unit circle is simply a circle. We ordinarily center it at the origin and it has radius 1 and that will be the heart of the development of sine and cosine. So what we do is we imagine that we have a real number line and it is going to be tangent to the circle at the point 1 comma 0 and that's the point 0 on the number line. So now consider that we have a point somewhere on the number line. And let's call that point T. What we're going to do now is essentially just imagine we're going to wrap that number line around the circle. And when we do that, the point T is going to fall right there on the circle. Now, since the circumference of the circle is 2 pi, because the radius is 1, if t happened to be at the point pi over 2, it would wrap right to pi over 2. If t happened to be all the way up at pi, it would wrap to pi. If it was all the way up at 3 pi over 2, it would wrap here. And if t were actually equal to 2 pi, it would go all the way around the circle and end there. Imagine also if t were, say, um, minus pi, it would come to here. So any real number on that number line wraps somewhere onto the unit circle. It's also very important to understand that because we're in a unit circle, this central angle t and the number t on the number line have exactly the same measure. That is the key, and that's why we have to use a unit circle. So now, finally, we're able to come up with the definition of sine and cosine. And it is remarkably simple, but it, it is at the heart of trig. So it works like this. This point right here, where t hit the circle, the coordinates of that point are known as cos of t, comma, sine of t. And that is how sine and cosine are defined, as ordered pairs on the unit circle. So that definition, um, the importance of that definition, cannot be overemphasized. And everything in trig ultimately comes back to that understanding. And so once we understand how that works, we can very quickly get the following table for values of cosine and sine. So, if you remember from our definition that any point along here which has length t, let me indicate it like that, that length is t, this angle is t, the coordinates of that point are simply going to be cos t comma sine t. So here we are when t is 0, this is the ordered pair. Here we are at t pi over 2, here's the ordered pair. At pi, ordered pair, and at 3 pi over 2, ordered pair. So once you follow that and understand the definition of cosine and sine, filling in this table is actually quite easy, and it should look like this. Here we are at 1. At pi over 2, the x value is 0. 
at pi, the x value is minus 1. 3 pi over 2, 0, and 2 pi, we're back to 1. Similarly, sine, which is the, the y value, is going to follow along, and it's going to be 0, and then 1, and then 0, and then minus 1, and then finally 0. And that is pretty simple, and that shows you how the definition of cosine and sine works. I hope. So in the next uh, video, we'll talk about the difference and the way that radian measure and degree measure um, compare with each other. See you then.